Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone in today's class for the first intermediate uh, grade. Our textbook is Super Goal 2 and today we will cover what uh, can you do there uh, grammar. And this lesson will be presented by me, teacher Mazin Al-Harbi, and the sign language by uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Saleh Al-Ajan. So let's begin. Our objectives in today's lesson, we hope that at the end of this lesson, you will be able to use model, can, for ability and possibility, and also use inventive with the verb like, and also practice can, can't in statements and sentences. Before we do this, let's make a quick revision on our last lesson. Last lesson, we have one main question to answer, which is, what can you do? And we have shown, uh, we have shown you uh, different uh, pictures of uh, different places, and we did say, what can we do at these places? For example, uh, when we go to a hotel, what kind of activity that we can do in a hotel? We can say that we can stay at the hotel. And also, number two, at the mall, we said that we can hang out at the mall, we can buy different uh, things, we can shop at the mall, so there are a lot of things we can do at the mall. Even with number three, gym, we said that we can work out at the gym. And the fourth one, at the bookstore, we said that we can buy books from bookstore. And number five, we said about a bank, if we go to the bank, we can open an account in a bank. And also with the supermarket, we can buy fruit and vegetables and grocery, uh, groceries when we go to the supermarket. And also the other picture we have, number seven, we said at the museum, we can visit and enjoy uh, the art in a museum. Also, when we go to the park, we can walk or play. And when we go to a bus station, we can buy a bus ticket to move to another place. And even with restaurants, we can enjoy food and uh, try different, uh, uh, different tastes. Also with school, children can study at school. And lastly, when we go to, uh, to the airport, you can catch a plane at the airport. So we have uh, uh, seen those uh, pictures or those different places and we have talked about the different activities that we can do at each place. And now our lesson uh, for today is we're going to learn more about the model CAN and what exactly uh, we use CAN for. We use CAN if we want to express, if we want to say uh, about our ability and possibility. For example, if I want to say that I am able to do something, I would use can. For example, I can walk. And also, I can write. I can teach. So here about ability. This is, we use can to talk about your ability to do things. Here we have some example. How can we use uh, can and can't in a sentence? Have a look at the first picture here. Here we have a very nice laptop. And we can say here, I can use a laptop. This is my laptop. I can use it. I can uh, turn it on. I can write in this laptop. I can do a lot of things uh, with this one. But the other laptop, I can't use a laptop. I can't use this laptop. Why? Because the screen is damaged. The screen is damaged. It's not okay. So I cannot use it. I cannot use it. So this is about ability. I am not able to use this laptop because the screen is damaged. But with this one, I can use it because it's fine. It works okay. So when we want to use can, we express the ability, can you do this thing or can you do that thing? It express your ability into doing different things. So, as we said, we use can to express ability or possibility. An example of uh, ability, we say, I can speak English. I can speak English because I learned English since uh, 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 elementary school. But I cannot speak Chinese. I can't speak Chinese. I can't speak Chinese because I didn't learn Chinese. 
This is what do you mean by ability. Now, what about possibility? For example, you can play golf at the resort. You can play golf at the resort. So here can, it's not expressing ability, it's uh, expressing possibility. It is possible that you play golf at the resort. This is possible. Also the other example, I can't play football today. I'm studying for a test. And here the other example uh, expressing the possibility that you, uh, it's not possible for you to play football. Not because you, you're not able to, but because you are studying for a test. So this is the difference between expressing ability and expressing a possibility. Ability, to, it means that you are capable, you are able to do something. I can speak English, I can walk, I can use a laptop, I can practice, but with possibility, it means not that you are able, but it's not possible, either because you have uh, uh, other things to do or because the time is not right, as we have in this example. I can't play football today. I am studying for a test. You can play football, but right now, I can't play football because you have other tests or you are studying for a test. So this is the difference between the ability and the possibility. Now, let's learn more about how can we form a sentence with can. So, when we want to use can in affirmative sentence, a sentence that does not have any negative, so no matter what the subject pronoun is, we use can directly without adding or changing anything to the verb. I can say I can, he can, you can, they can, so we don't have to change anything with the verb. Also with negative sentences, the only thing we add here with negative sentences is uh, can't that we add uh, not to it. So cannot, this is the contraction, cannot roll or plate. So uh, uh, unlike, the other, uh, unlike the other verbs we have learned, when we are using the model can, here we don't make any changes, no matter what the subject is. We use the subject pronoun with the verb directly without making any changes. As we said, I can, they can, he can, she can, it can, and all the subjects. Even with the negative. The only thing we add with the negative sentences is that we add not after can. Also, by making question, we always start our questions with can. So, as we said with the sentence, the regular sentences, no matter what the subject is, always the form is still the same. So, we say, can I read? Can you read? Can he read? So, even with question, we don't make any changes to the verb whether the subject came uh, before the model can or even after the model can. And the short answers, we have two types of short answers. The first one started with yes, yes I can, yes they can, yes we can. And also the other answer uh, starts with no, no I can't, no you can't, no she can't or no they can't. So it's very important here to learn here that with can, or the sentences that we, uh, when we are using sentences with can, we don't make any changes, no matter what the subject pronoun is. No matter what the subject pronoun is, whether in question or sentences, or regular sentences, we don't make any changes to the verbs. We use them as uh, they are. And now, of course, as we said, this is a contraction. This is uh, can't is a short form of cannot. Can't is a short form of uh, cannot. And now, the other part we have uh, in uh, our today's lesson, which is uh, verb like plus the inventive. And usually, we use uh, the verb like with inventive to express uh, uh, our, uh, the, uh, not only the ability, but also what we want or what we would like to do. For example, I you, and here we have, not, other, uh, not like can, here we, we need to divide the subjects. So the four subject pronouns, we use them like to read. For example, I like to read. 
I love to read. And the other one, he or she likes to read. So with the first one here, we did not make any changes to like, but with the other one, he or she, here we added an S or S to the uh, verb like. Likes, he likes to read or she likes to read. And we use, as we said, we use the like plus infinitive to express what do we like. And the other uh, uh, negative sentence, if we are using it to negative sentences, we would say with the same subject pronouns, the for one, they or we or I don't like to read. As with he or she, we said he or she does not like to read. So this is how can we use the inventive in a sentence. And what exactly we mean by the inventive? Inventive is to plus a verb, any kind of verb. To plus a verb. So we use like and we use to and a verb. And why are we using these? These, we are using them to express what do we like. So, whether in affirmative sentence, I like to read, or in negative sentences, I don't like to read, we use them to express what do we like. And the only difference uh, from uh, this uh, inventive and also with model can, that with model can, no matter what the subject pronoun is, we don't make any changes to the verb. But with the inventive, no, here we have to stop a little bit and see what exactly the kind of subject are we using. If we are using he or she, whether in affirmative sentence or a negative sentence, uh, in this case here we need to add s uh, to the verb. And how can we make questions with the inventive verb? We make question like this one. Do you like to swim? We use do with the, those subjects. I, you, we, they. Do you like to swim? Do we like to swim? Do they like to swim? So with these four subject pronouns, we use with them do. But with he and she, no, uh, at this case, we use does. For example, does he or does she like to swim? Does he or does she like to swim? And of course, as we have learned with the last semester with the simple present, how can we make questions with simple present? We always answer either with do, yes I do, or no I don't, or if we are using he or she, we would say yes he, he does or no he does not. So again, the only difference we have between the inventive and the model can is that with the inventive, we uh, need to pay attention to what kind of subject are we using. And when can we use like plus the infinitive when we want to express what do we like in different things. I like to read, I like to hang out at the mall, he likes uh, to read books, uh, he likes to drive to work. So when you are expressing what do you like, it, uh, we use the like plus the infinitive. So now let's take a couple of exercises just to, to understand more about the model can and the inventive. So our first exercise we have is this one, exercise number eight. Complete the sentences with can or can't and the verb in parentheses. So what we need to do here is that we want to use either can or can't and also using the uh, verbs we have uh, in between parentheses. And pay attention, before you answer, you need to read the whole sentence. And why? Because you should read the whole sentence to know whether the person can or can't. And then start to write down your answer. So the first one, Ahmed Plank come tonight. He is finishing an assignment. He is finishing an assignment. So uh, uh, this is about Ahmed coming tonight. And the other half of the sentence, they say he is finishing. It means right now, he is finishing an assignment. So, uh, uh, can Ahmed uh, come or can't he? Let's see the answer. The answer is Ahmed cannot come. And how can we know that he can or can't? Because we have read the sentence. He is finishing an assignment. Let's read the second one. And this one is a question. Luke, drive them to the mall in his car. Luke drive them to the mall in his car. Now we want to make question 
about whether Luke is able to drive them in his car or not. And we said that when we want to make question using model can, where should we put uh, can? Very good. We use uh, can in the beginning. Can Luke drive them to the mall in his car? And as we said, whether if it's a sentence or if it's a question, we don't make any changes to the verb if we are using can. Number three, we meet tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to the dentist. We meet tomorrow afternoon. I am going. It means right now I am going to the dentist. So the answer will be we cannot. We can't meet. Why and how can I know that? The answer is can't, not can, because he said here, I am going to the dentist. Number four, Mr. Sawyer, see you now. I am afraid he is very busy. I am afraid he is very busy. So now, can Mr. Sawyer see me or he can't? And how can I know? I should pay attention to this sentence. I am afraid he is very busy. So what do you think? Can he or can't he? Very good. So, Mr. Sawyer can't see you now. I am afraid he is very busy. Number five. You, Plank, speak in the library, but you, Plank, read. You read in the, or speak in the library, but you read. So here we have two contrasting ideas because we are using but. So one of these sentences should be can and the other should be can't. What do you think? Very good. We start with can't. You cannot speak in the library because we know that library always for people who wants to read in silence. And the other, you can read. You can read because this is what people do when they go to the library. Number six, Imad stay very long. His friends are waiting for him. His friends are waiting. They are right now. They are waiting for him. So the answer must be very good. The answer must be can't. He can't stay very long because uh, his friends are waiting right now. At this moment, they are waiting for him right now. So these are the answers of the first exercise, exercise A. The other exercise uh, uh, we have on the other page, this is a very interesting one. Here I would like you to work with a partner, a family member, or even a classmate, and make, uh, we'll try to make questions and answer them by looking at these pictures. And let's uh, agree that the person we would like to make a question about, let's name him Fred, okay? Let's name that person Fred. And let's make questions about uh, different things from these pictures to ask about Fred. So, if you see the picture that does not have an X sign, so it means that uh, we, the answer will be yes, he can. And if we see the picture that has an X sign like this one, the answer will be, or the answer that we should use is uh, can't, okay? Now, for example, we'll see a picture like this, and from the verb and the uh, vocabulary of the word we have, we can make question by can. Can Fred play basketball? Can Fred play basketball? And what should we choose, yes or no? Very good. Here we should use yes because there is no X sign on the picture. So we would say, yes, he can. The other one, can Fred drive a bus? Can Fred? drive a bus and the answer must uh, we must say no because we have an x sign as i said it's a very interesting one now this uh, this is only an example now let's try to answer the first one the first one here i have uh, the verb make and sandwich and i want to say that whether a fred can make sandwich or not so the question will be can Fred make a sandwich? Can Fred make a sandwich? And the answer will be, yes, he can, because there is no X sign on the picture. Let's try the second one. The second picture we have is ride and bike. And we want to talk about Fred's ability for a bike. So how can we form a question? Very good. So the question always starts with can. So it will be like this. 
Can Fred ride a bike? Can Fred ride a bike? The answer will be yes, he can, because there is no X sign on the picture. Number three, ride a motorcycle. Ride a motorcycle. And here we, not, we want to make a similar questions. So, how can we make a, a question about this? Excellent. Can Fred ride uh, or uh, ride a motorcycle? The answer will be no, he can't, because here we have an X sign on the picture. And number four, using a laptop. We want to uh, see whether Fred is able to use a laptop or not. So the question will be, can Fred use a, a computer or a laptop? The answer, yes, he can. So it's very simple. How can we make questions using can? The last one, uh, ice skate. Can Fred ice skate? The answer, of course, will be no, he can't, because here we have uh, an X sign on the picture. So it's very simple. How can we form a question using can? Is that uh, we don't make any changes uh, to the verb, and this is uh, uh, even uh, simpler. And now, with the other exercise, exercise C, uh, use the pictures you can see in exercise B. So the pictures we just seen on exercise B, I would like you to use them by answering these questions. Talk about which activities can you do and which can't you do. So instead of uh, talking about Fred, let's talk about you. Do you uh, can you ice skate? Can you ride a motorcycle? Can you use a laptop? Can you make a sandwich? So just think of yourself when you are answering those uh, uh, exercises or activities that you can see in exercise B. And also, the other thing I would like you to do, talk about which activities do you like to do and write them in order of your preference. So, talk about the activities you like and put them in order. For example, you say, you can say, I like to make a sandu uh, sandwich. This is uh, the first thing you like to do. And the other one, I like to ride a motorcycle. Then the third one, I like to use a laptop. So you make them in order. Just uh, talk about the things that you like to do and put them in uh, order. The last thing we have uh, in our exercise uh, or in our lesson today is that I want you to ask your classmates, your family member, or even your friends what they can or can do and write their names in this chart and tick can or can't. For example, go to any classmate, go to any friend that you know and ask him similar question uh, starting by the word can. For example, ask uh, anyone and say, can you drive? And when he say, yes, I can, here you put a tick. Yes, I can. And write his name right down here. And if you ask the other person, can you play basketball? And he said, no, I can't. Write his name here and tick the word uh, or uh, this uh, column, can't. So it's very interesting exercise. It helps you to know about uh, people's ability of doing different things. And now we have reached the end of our lesson. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.